Drew travels to Somerset to face an old adversary. Hello again. Great to see you. And battles to reach an agreement on price. It's never worth that. In a, in a million years, it's not worth that. At a Lincolnshire Antiques Warehouse, he receives a curious welcome. The master's been expecting you. <laughs> Thank you. And at an amusement park in South Wales, the signs are good. Ugh. As Drew clambers to find a bargain. Oh, look at that. Happy days. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Wow. Oh, my God. Blimey. Very impressive. I don't know where to look first. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Yeah. In his hunt for treasure... They are not for sale. He bargains hard. Four and a half thousand for a pack. Wow. And there's nothing he won't buy. How much does one of those run um, for? About 150,000. With help from his wife, Rebecca... Hey, that was a quick turnaround. ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk... To jazz. It's a busy time for Drew Pritchard and his team in Conroy, North Wales. Get that one online now, and that can go in the showroom now. With a constant turnaround of stock... So, they're going to be collected tomorrow and will be delivered next week. Drew and T hit the road in pursuit of more curious and standout objects. They've been Drew and T. The house is in Taunton, a four and a half hour drive from Conway. Taunton derives its name from the town on the River Tone. Taunton Castle is a Grade One listed ancient monument and dates from the 12th century. In 1685, following the Monmouth Rebellion, an attempt to overthrow James II, it became the location for the Bloody Assize Courts. 500 rebels were tried and 144 were sentenced to death by hanging. But it's a different castle that Drew is on his way to visit. All the way down the M5. Yep, all the way. To see your friend and mine, Ben Slade. Hey! Yep. Drew has locked horns with Sir Ben Slade before when he visited one of his stables. 100 quid. Uh, I think we need a bit more than that. 225. Can't you squeeze it up a bit? Because I think you'll get more than that. Always a double-edged sword with Ben. So you're not looking forward to it then? The uh, the whole. I think trepidation. <laughs> it's probably the best yeah. way. But you just never know. He does make me smile. I always come away with it with a different opinion. Extreme bargaining. Yeah, either that or an extreme headache. One or the other. Baronet Sir Benjamin Slade also owns Woodlands Castle on the outskirts of Taunton, and it's this property Drew is visiting today. Sir Ben is a descendant of King Charles II, King Henry I and King George IV. Woodlands Castle was originally pseudo-Tudor-style manor house it is today. The current use for this property is weddings, parties, funerals, bar mitzvahs, uh, whatever you want. I don't mind. We could do, we do mood photo shoots or something like that, you know. Um, I'm very keen on doing anything, anything that brings some money in, because uh, when I got into this property, I didn't realise how many repairs it needed. We've got um, things that have been cast out over the years, like broken toys, old chairs, things that, you know, really were quite valueless. I suppose with the time, they probably might have a bit of value now. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right, okay, here we go. Hello again. Great to see you. Thank Welcome, you. Dog. Remember the dog. That Is he any friendlier? Uh, no, he's having a bad day today. Oh. Is he? Uh, yeah, he doesn't like visitors. OK. <laughs> so this is your new castle? Newish no, castle? Uh, he's only had it for 15 years. He hadn't had any money spent on it for 80 years, and when I came here, there's a whole lot of junk. So junk, what, are you going to try and sell me? Definitely am, yes. It's all in the way, and it has to go. It's got to be cleared. OK. Realistic prices? Uh, yes, because if you don't have it, it's going off to the auctions. Excellent. Yeah, all right, let's go. Let me in. <laughs> okay, yeah, I want to right. see it. You can take him with you as well. <laughs> <laughs> you go near the dog. No, I don't want to go near the dog. With Ben, it can be fun, but, but it can also be like pulling teeth because he's, he's an old bugger when he wants to be, and I really hope that he's in a proper selling mood, not just he wants to feel like selling something. Well, who knows? I'll put some new paintings. Uh, well... 
Yeah. So no. where's where's first? We go in here, I think. Have a wander in here. Nothing in here. All new. No, it's old. It's not old. Now all of these, all of this is is, is a no. Right. Oh dear. As yet, absolutely nothing. And I'm walking around and everything's new. Oh my god. What the really? Yeah. <laughs> Where on earth did you get this lot from? And I was a doctor, as you know, a long time ago, and sometimes really? Yeah, 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 a long time ago. Oh, seriously really? a long time ago, yeah. I'm just a bit of a hyper now, but I was a doctor a long time ago. I, I was shocked. I walked upstairs in this, you know, lovely old Georgian house and he's got a full on doctor's surgery. It's just, you know, he never ceases to amaze me. There are quite a few things in here that I do like the look of. I like the ear. They're usually made by Adam Roulet. Yeah, that's all right. That's okay, quite like that. Plaster and timber ones are way more valuable. And the ones that are marked are way more valuable. It's also incomplete with minor damage. Wait, why is it incomplete? See where the letters are? Mm -hmm. That piece is missing from there. There's a whole piece missing from there. There's another whole piece missing from there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The use of anatomical models can be dated back to the ancient Egyptians. This 20th century example could prove to be a sound investment at £200. So how much is it? <laughs> <laughs> ben doesn't quite get the fact that if it's incomplete, it really isn't worth the money he's asking. I'm going to start really low, 40 quid. No, that is, that is... How much? Well, it's probably a few hundred, isn't it? Ben is sort of pushing today, but so am I. I think that Ben needs a slight reality check. Architectural antique expert Drew Pritchard is at Woodlands Castle in Somerset. Oh, my God. Drew's found something he likes. So how much is he? I don't know how much he got. But he's struggling to do a deal. What's he worth, like 500? Realistic, 100 quid. Uh, it's oh, worth, come on, it's, it's worth 175 quid at best. Is that all? That's all. I sell this stuff all the time. It's incomplete then. So, uh, 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 I'll... 100 you, quid. A little bit. 100. Five. You see, it is valuable, isn't it? Well, it's got... Ben, right, how it works is I buy things, right, <laughs> that I like, and then I sell them to people with a little bit of profit on it, and that's how I survive. Yeah, well, that's... We're going to go on, down... Let's have the good stuff now. Well, show me the good okay, stuff. OK, we'll show we, We've got some really good stuff around. An incomplete piece like that, without any maker's marks on it, which do help. It's got a value, and that's all it's worth to me. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. Come on, Bolly. Steering wheels a bit. Khaki. Where did these come from? Just auction uh, finds? No, they're in the cellar. Really? Quite like that one. That's fab, isn't it? That's great. Would have had circus animals and stuff with it as well. Wouldn't it? Walked into the landing space and there was uh, four toys on the floor, um, and a couple of them looked really, really good actually. So uh, I was pleased to see them. First one was a Triumph pedal car. Now at the moment I'm building up a collection of these pedal cars that I'm going to be selling at my outlet in Liberty, London, and uh, I'm trying to get about ten together, all original ones. And so it's sort of just ideal timing. Triang was part of Line Brothers Limited, a British company most famous for building toy railways. The Lines Brothers started. Once restored, this 1960s pedal car could have a value of around £250. Uh, I need to buy a wheel for it. Um, it's a common one. 50 quid. Done. Sold. That one. There's a train carriage up here, and it looks amazing, actually. It's a really, really good one. The more I look at it, the better it gets. Turn of the century, latest, outstanding original condition. That's up for your quid. Go on, how much? So, how about 650? Really? It's, that, it's never worth that. In a, in a million years, it's not worth that. Ben's being... Um, 
this toy windmill, possibly a one-off from the 1850s, could be worth 250 pounds. Um, 100 quid? It's a bit more. Yeah. Sold. Bought the windmill at the right price as well. That just needs a band going in here so it uh, as the wheels turn. As this one turns here, it turns this what's left of that band and the whole thing moves as you drag it along. That spins. Lovely. So that's really nice. Very simplistic thing as well. Having started to agree on some prices, will Sir Benjamin be more realistic with items stored in the garages? Go on, Molly. Go on. Oh, Get lovely, on. Bill. Can we pull this one out, T? Yeah. One thing I saw as soon as I walked in was the club chairs. Now, these are French. They are from the early part of the 20th century, and they've got a slightly uncomfortable feel to the seats on all French stuff as well. Uh, but they're very saleable. This one's the same. French, hot, uncomfortable as hell. Quite like the colour of this one. Not bothered about that, that's a bit really plain. But the one at the back is green. That I really like. Really old school guys, office, club. It's got that feeling about it. Again, it's French, so the quality's okay. They're not great, but the look is always good. Um, if I can buy these at the right price. Used armchairs with clean, flexible lines, in contrast to the Art Nouveau style that preceded it. The moustache shaped backrest gained popularity after the Second World War. Refurbished, these chairs could have a combined value of around £1,300. I need to buy these chairs for. I will give you for the pair 450 for the pair. For the pair? For the pair. And that is exactly what you'd get at auction. But you don't have to take it. I'm going to take them away. Pay you now. You're not paying anybody. You're not paying anybody to take them there. You can go up a little squeeze on that. So what have I come in? What did I say? 450. 450. 475. For the pair. The leather chairs, because they're just two singles, will go privately. The green one, can, they look good, so they'll both find good homes. Nancy, hurry up. I think today's been a bit of a laugh, but I do need some more dosh. But, uh, you know, uh, there it is, he's been a bit tight-fisted. That was the only bargain all day. Taxi, is it? <laughs> ben doesn't change. Same old Ben. Uh, driving around the bend. I think he's getting worse, in fact. But, amongst all that to and fro, and I did manage to buy a couple of decent pieces. Finished? I feel finished. I think I should have taken some more money off you. You should have... So, how do you think that went? You've well, been around Ben now for a little it while. It's uh, an interesting duel, I think, as opposed to oh. anything else. It's absolutely ridiculous. You just can't get anywhere. We don't entertain him for me. Why can you uh, duke it out? With the battle over, Drew arrives back in Conway, ready to show Rebecca the spoils. So, what have you got this time? We've been to see Sir Ben, haven't we? This is his third visit. Um, he always comes back with some gems. Carl, this is for you. Yeah. Can you pull the front out? Order a new wheel online. You can buy these. Yeah. Triang. Yeah. Go online, buy one. And the steering's up. It's catching there, look. Yeah. OK? In front-handed. The toy cup sort of balance, balances that out. This for Liberty again, please. It's actually quite well made. And then that little toy windmill. I mean, very cute. Very well done. I mean, the sails were angled. It wasn't just flat, plain. Um, no, cute item. That one's a little bit scabby, but it won't take too much to sort it out. What? What? Scabby. It's a bit rough. It's a bit rough. Um, it's had a, a cat. Yeah, so Gab, claws, full yeah. Monty, please. So straight in, um, just full, just you look at, you have to do everything to that one. This is why I bought them, was for this one. Which I really like. I love this. Isn't that lovely? Yes. It makes such a difference, doesn't it? The green chair, the Art deco -y type style, that... See, saddle soaps and cleaners and leather rubs. 
we get it from the local equestrian supplier down the road. It's way more expensive, but it gives a longer luster and it feeds the leather and brings it up. Look at it immediately, seconds. That's all it is, just good ingredients, gently. That won't take long, half an hour? Yeah, cool, I'll leave you to it. All right. The moustache back chair receives the same treatment. Carl and Gavin straighten out the side of the pedal car. The toys are then packed up, ready for the special display at Drew's Outlet at Liberty of London Department Store. After fighting for every sale at Woodlands Castle, Drew lost the country to Lincolnshire. These are all Georgian, these things. Nice ones, too. So they're Giorgio on that side and Vicky on that side. Georgie and Vicky. Great. Limo. <laughs> Gainsborough used to be an important inland port. In the 16th century, boats carried coal from the Nottinghamshire pits, and by the 18th century, the port saw transportation of a variety of goods to London. A popular attraction in the town, Gainsborough Old Hall was built in the 15th century and is one of the best preserved timber framed medieval manor houses in Britain. Uh, we're off to uh, Antiques and Interior, and it's uh, trade, so it's piled high, no prices, unrestored. He's the one on the right, owns Antique Interiors. He's been involved in the industry for 26 years and trades almost exclusively with other dealers. I come in here every day and I still walk around and look at it all and think, I like that and I like that and I like that. I always think there's something in here for everybody, you know, whatever the budget is, if it's a pound. The greatest thing is when people come in and say, I really love your place, so if Drew buys something, it's a plus point. But if he doesn't, as long as he says he likes the place, that'll be enough for me. Hello. All right. Mike? Yes. All right. How are you doing, Drew? Uh, I'm fine, Drew. All nice right. to meet you. All right, tea. 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 Right, tea. Um, All right. Where on earth did you get that from? Uh, antique fair. He looks like an old dealer, doesn't he? Yeah. Master's been expecting you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, so, where to? So this is Trade Warehouse? Yeah, Trade Warehouse. I, but I like these sort of um, flappettes, or what you want to call them. Um, little French solicitors thing, but I like them in the paint. A year ago, two years ago, everything needed to be polished. Now they want it in paint. So I just thought, well, I'll just leave it outside, let it go rusty or something. <laughs> yourself, you know, with, with your world, you're you very know. right. Yeah, it's perfect, isn't <laughs> it's it? A, you know it's, a, it's a shame, but you're right. He's buying for other dealers. It's hard to do. It's a hard business, and he's only making a small profit. So today's not about knocking him. I know the prices are all going to be right. Um, it's just finding that special thing that all the other people have missed. This is, this is, yeah, this is it's sort of... It's like... Yeah. A bit of everything. Just something in here you can't buy. What's that? You're joking. I've had it for 20 years. Really? That, yeah. Oh, you never sell it? No, it's just one of those things that you've, you've got. I, I think I'd sell absolutely anything mm. because there's always something else. One thing Mike has got here is a half-size carved fruit wood European Christ figure. It's in a type of polychromed paint which has crackled and it's a really unusual paint scheme. It's odd. And that's why I like it. But Mike says it is not for sale. But he's dealer, so you shouldn't leave it in your shop if you don't want to try and sell it to me. I'm going to have a go. Salvage saviour Drew Pritchard is at Antique Interiors in Gainsborough. Oh, you never sell it? No, it's just one of those things that you've, you've got. I definitely want the Christ figure. I know you do. Throw a figure, throw a figure no, there, at there us. There isn't one. On, there isn't one. It's like, I just need, need to keep it. I just need to keep it. All right, fair enough. Fair enough. I'd like to keep it happy, but I need to keep it. That's stinky, isn't it? There was this wonderful inspection lamp. Now, this is the type of inspection lamp you wouldn't have in a garage. This would be in your toolkit in the back of your car. So that could have come out of a Rolls-Royce, could have come out of a Bentley, could have come out of all manner of cars. But they're usually bigger with a, a completely covered bulb. That one isn't, that is just a car one. It's for nothing more than that. And you just have two crocodile clips on the end. You'd hook it onto your battery and you could find out what was wrong with your car. Well, in fact, no, you wouldn't, your chauffeur would. Very nice. This nickel-plated example from the 1920s, once refurbished and rewired, could be worth 100 pounds. Oh, that's fine, 20 quid, lovely. 
It's got the original nickel plating, it's super cute, it's very small, and it's 20 quid. What's not to love? With the first deal done, Drew heads outside. So what's this place then, uh, outside? It's sort of, it's a bit of an out, it's a work in progress. Is this where you sunbathe? <laughs> yeah, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I've got nothing to do. They're a nice pair of bench hands, aren't they? Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. Night, the colour's good. What about those ones over there? Um, ah, a bit Pugin style. They're really cheap as well. Are they? Yeah. You'll like this 50 quid a pair. No. Yes. That much? Ah! <laughs> Fabulous. 1870s into 1880s cast iron pew seat supports. Rare. Interesting oak leaf trefoils. And you've got all this sort of bracken, Scottish looking stuff. That's why I think the McFarlane blown away to find something like that here. How many dealers have been through here and just not picked them up? Brilliant things. McFarlane's was the most important manufacturer of ornamental ironwork in Scotland in the 19th century. These two sets of cast iron pews in the arts and crafts style, once restored as benches, could be worth £600. They've got everything Drew's looking for, the heavy and the dirty. And they're cheap. Yes. But they're never cheap. They're good they're, value. They're, yeah, they're good. really good value. So, uh, two pairs? Yes. Two How much were they? 50 quid a pair. So, thank you. Thank you. We'll have those. I asked Mike, I'd have probably paid 150 to 250 pound a pair. That's desirable. There was something I saw on the wall in there. You can just see it through the wall there. See it? Martini. Martini sign. What's that? How much is that one? I'll have to go and have a look. See if it's see if I can remember how much it's cost. As we were going out to the garden area, Mike was leading us through. Spotted out in the corner of my eye a Martini parking sign. So two things you wouldn't expect together, but it's I don't know. It just, it's cool. It's a great colour. It's an old, cool brand. Size is good. That, I could see it from through the... When I saw it when we walked through, and I could see it from outside, that one, the Martini sign there. The Martini Drinks brand was established in 1860. It's going to be 50 quid. <gasps> Sold. OK. Thank you very much. Martini parking. Alcohol, cars. Yeah, yeah. always a good mix. Yeah, that, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, getting it down. Tea. Yeah. Yep. Oh, is that his? Tea? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he has got the jaw <laughs> turn. <laughs> yeah, it's gone good. I enjoyed it. It was a great that he bought a few things, um, a few things that I've had for a while and uh, new stock to him, but old, old stock to me, so um, he's gone away happy and I'm happy. So it was a good day. It was a pleasure. We've managed to pick up some very good pieces and then we managed to pick up some belting. The right money, he's a good guy and he's taking a profit. It's done properly, nice to see. Super, super guy, super player. If I can't make a profit on that lot, I'm going to pack it in and do something else. Mike. OK. Nice uh, Cheers, Mike. Thank you very it. much. Cheers, Mike. Enjoyed Thank it. you. Thanks very much. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Enjoyed it. Thanks very much. Excellent trade. Cool. Nice one. Thank you very much. See you later. Because the grassroots of the business is that. Without him, there'd be no stock for anyone, would there? No. It's the hardest thing because they're taking a very short profit all of the time. And he's got to go out there and be really careful on his buying again. You know, when, it, when the job is easy, it's very simple to make money out of this job. When it, as it is now, it's hard. <laughs> I'm doing my best. In Conway, there's a furry friend eagerly waiting to welcome Drew home. Hello. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's straight down to work for Gavin, priming and painting the cast iron pews to refurbish them back to their original condition. The seat and backrest are made from a hardwood, which is then painted black to match the pews. They're good. Cool colour. Good shape. I like them. Done. Finished. Carl rewires and adds a switch to the inspection light. Yay! 
Drew sells some of his stock at his outlet at a prestigious London store. Liberty of London is one of the most exclusive and unique department stores in the world. The iconic Mock Tudor building opened in 1875 and now attracts millions of shoppers a year. We've been in Liberty now for over nine months and they've very kindly given us a new area today to display uh, Drew's boys' toys. It's the perfect place to showcase the restored pedal car and wooden windmill Drew found at Sir Benjamin's. I think actually there, that looks really The toy collection is really aimed at not the little person, but the grown up man. You'll sort of see some of these toys, the cars, and go, oh, I used to have one of those. That's it, we finished. Everything's on display, tickets are up, and we need more stock. Back on the road, Drew's visiting an amusement park in South Wales, who are selling off some of their unwanted paraphernalia. What did St. Patrick say to all the snakes as he was driving them out of Ireland? Did it? You're right in the back there. <laughs> Half hours from the top to the bottom of Wales, to the seaside town of Porthcawl. Porthcawl was originally developed as a coal port during the 19th century, but soon became a seaside resort. Built in 1887, Porthcawl's promenade runs along the seafront and commands spectacular views of its beaches and across the Bristol Channel. We're off to Coney Beach, going to an amusement arcade. They've got amusements, they've got rides, they've got, you name it, all sorts. Can we go in the arcade as well? Yeah. Coney Beach Amusement Park has been in operation since 1920, the Island Amusement Park in New York. Patrick Evans has family connections to Coney Beach, stretching back to its opening. We're a family-run park. My mother is still the boss in 92. She's still, she's still the boss of the firm. We came from horse dealers from Hay and White. And every year when the fair came round to Hereford Fair, the showmen paid in gold. All the farmers paid in livestock. And my great 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 grandfather decided we're in the wrong business, and that's how we got into show business. We've been looking through our storerooms, and we've got a number of old rides and some props and just general things we've collected over the 90 odd years we've been here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. I believe you've got some stuff you want to get rid of. Maybe. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Can we have a look? We may. Yeah. We just arrived at the Pleasure Park and it's it's sort of really old fashioned in a nice way. It's it's like all of these old British sort of institutional fairgrounds where you'd come down to. It's lovely, never been here before. But I like I like things like this. They had them around North Wales when I was a child. But before Drew begins, he calls Rebecca to give her feedback on the display at Liberties. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Are you OK? Yeah, good, good, good. The pictures have come through. Oh, the pictures have come through? Right. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It looks really good. It does, actually, Drew. Yeah, fantastic space. You need more stock, that's the only thing. That's exactly what I said. We need more stock. OK, what type of thing do you need? Um, we could do with more toys um, and okay. um, I think some more fairground rides. Yeah, that should, I might be able to do that too. Yeah. With his mission set, Drew heads inside. Blimey. <laughs> Look at this place. Amazing. Wow. Building was built in 1960 and they were, they were the original fixtures. God, I bet hardly any of these survived. There's only, these are probably the only ones left. So are these things here that, are, that you're yes. wanting to get rid of? The, the back the, these here. are some things, yes. Some of the things. But new rabbit gear, this is circa 1950s. That one is the same era. This, this is good. This is going to be, I'd say... Early 70s, late yeah. 60s, early 70s. Yeah, it's a copy of um, what they call the Mayor's Manx was the first beach buggy, and this is a pretty accurate copy of it. Initially, I thought, oh, good, there's all sorts here, um, but it's too new. It's 30, 40 years old, and um, unfortunately, after 
bypass all of this. So what's this storage for now? This was the old art shop. Ah, no blinding for that. Wow. This is more like this is the sort of thing I'm looking for. Are this lot available? Yeah, all this is available. Really exciting. As soon as you open the door, there is just stuff everywhere. The only problem is, it's all in really bad condition. I'm not saying a bit bad, it's horrendous. So, we're going to have to pick through the lot. Ugh. And there's piles of them. Not just the odd one, there's hundreds. Chicken salad, a pound. <laughs> <laughs> they will be talking. You, <laughs> you hardly get any hand sign writing, so I know a lot about the subject. These have been done by somebody who actually is really quite good. Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Look at the terrible nick. What a brilliant piece of artwork that is. Wow. Love that. Look at those two. They're very attractive to people because they sort of take you to that place or, or they're funny or they have a relevance or they're just interesting and decorative. These signs date from the 1950s to the 1970s. Drew selected a pile which range in quality and could be worth from £5 to £200 each. Um, so those, these, those, how on earth do we value this lot then? Give us a clue. You give me a clue. All right. Uh, 400. Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is at Coney Beach Amusement Park in South Wales, 20 miles from Swansea. Love that. He sifted through piles of signs for his display at Liberty of London, Ugh. but will Pat accept his offer? 400. Any more movement than that? Could... It's, been, it's been a hard winter, there's no money coming in now, it's a hard winter. That's a pretty, good, that's a pretty good bit. Are we, are we near, near? Yeah, we're near. I think I uh, took Pat aback, actually, when I offered him 400 quid for the pile. I thought I could possibly have to spend 500 on all of them. Now, some of them are only worth a fiver, the little ones. But then you've got the bigger ones and the odder ones that will hopefully make the profit. But it's still a little chancy. Ended up paying 450 for the pile. Happy. Carry on digging, I think, today. We went through into another section of the shed, and... With here, I'm literally having to dig through every single piece, and I spot one timber letter, just cut from a piece of wood. Um, old sign writing, old painting, the whole bit. Start digging, there's a handful there, and another couple of signs. That, that little pile there's of interest. 50 quid? Yeah, okay. deal. Happy? Yeah, lovely. So we do a deal on that one, 50 pound. Okay. Yeah. And then we find another pile as well, so we dig out another load of signs. So we've got another five there. Um, <laughs> a couple of a couple of decent ones, one if you want. 75 quid. 100 quid sounds better. There you go. Jobs are good. Happy days. So we're paying the right money for everything. We're not getting anything cheap, and we're just paying the right price for them. But I'm glad to be able to buy in this sort of quantity. It's rare to buy piles like this, it's usually you'll get one or two. Drew then braves the haunted house to search for more items. <laughs> this bit's not used then, so it's more stuff. Look at that. Straight in there. Do you want to break? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just see if it's glass or... Glass. Is that the bottom? Yeah. Uh, Raw glass. Either. Can see it? Yeah. Be careful in case it falls out the frame. What haunted houses have are distorted mirrors. The glass ones are way more valuable than the sort of polished steel ones, um, or polished alloy, really. People put them in their houses, generally. I've not seen one of any other use than in a house. Yeah, it's a good size, that one. They're really desirable now. People really want them. I mean, I wouldn't want one at home, but people do. You look like that in the mirror anyway, don't you? I'd look that, look that odd. I'd look odd, and it's covered in dust and I still look odd. <laughs> so, is there any more of them? Um, I think there are. I know there are. I'm not sure. 
These distorting mirrors are a traditional attraction at Funfairs. This pair of mirrors could reach around two thousand pounds. Thousand pound for the two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Deal. Deal. Thank you. Cool. Surprising how much stuff we found today. It is, yes, isn't yeah. it? Amazing. Yeah. I'm surprised where they seen the value, what things that they seen value in, but I, I didn't. Is that great? It's opened my eyes up to how, how much value there is in the stuff I do have around me. Today's been fantastic in Porth Court. Need, and she said, fairground stuff and signs. Well, hit the nail right on the head. You know, so it's gone from a dilapidated, damp, leaking shed to the best shop in the country. It's quite a, that's quite a journey, isn't it? Oh, we'll get them heaters on, T. It's not cold. You're joking. It's lovely. Yeah, but you've got a lot more. Work done. Uh, insulation, I was going to no, say. No, no. <laughs> work done, that is what you're looking for. Mentally, mentally, I'm never turned off. Always working. So, boy done good. Yeah, those signs. Have we ever brought that many signs in one go, have we? Never. I don't know how many, what do you reckon there's there, 50? Easy. The next morning, they travel back to Conway. And as you can see, we've got loads. we got... Sorts. We might have got, you think we got 50 or 60 like others? No. Yeah. How cool are these? Look, double-sided, oh, on tin. Yeah. So you've got big ones, little ones, all sorts. When Drew said he was going off to Coney Beach Pleasure Park, um, I mean, your mind just goes, ting, signs. And he's done so well. Probably about 50 signs. Some are all saying the same thing. But my favourite, favourite has to be hold on to your hats, which was also Drew's favourite. He should keep it, really. I mean, it does shout Drew Pritchard. Funny mirrors. Brilliant. Paid a thousand quid for the pair. They're going to need, I think they're going to need the... The fairground mirrors, they are like hen's teeth. I was thrilled to see those. You always have to pay quite a bit, but they're rare. There's the original finish. That black, which actually coming off, look. And the original ebonising oh, is there. Take this, take this loose surface off and get back to that. I'll leave you to it. Gavin gets started cleaning the mirrors. The church pews Drew bought from Antique Interiors have been put on the website. And after a lot of interest in the martini sign... Same red as the parking red, and it is, um, I'd call it, nail varnish red. It stays in the trade and is bought by another antiques dealer. Ephraim Woodlands Castle is waiting for a new owner, but the green club chair has crossed the pond and gone to a private home in America. The signs that Drew found at Coney Beach have now taken pride of place at his toy collection at Liberty of London. Drew and Rebecca have made the trip together to see the finished display. There you go. They look good, don't they? I think people are going by collection. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy with those. And you happy with all the toys? Yes, that looks that looks good too. The job Rebecca's done is great. We've uh, got a good look about the place. I think the, the best thing is the signs by Country Mile. Looks fantastic. Price point's right. Put those into a room. They're a bit humorous. They'll just change the whole feeling of any way you put them. Very good. 